going to start the next session. And we are uh, really have the pleasure to, to uh, have Dr. Samra Jankar again in our Sudanese Surgical Club. We enjoyed your first presentation uh, about colorectal cancer. And I'm sure that everybody will enjoy this uh, second pre presentation. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dr. Samrat, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, should I start? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving me opportunity to add a Sir was Raj sir was my one of the teacher. I was joined for this session. Excellent, wonderful session. After such a talk, I think. as quickly as possible. Surgeon will get in the OPD. Sorry, sir, your voice is not clear. Uh, Dr. Jankar, your voice is breaking. I think we, we have a problem with the connection. Got disconnected. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fistula in anu is a, one of the common surgical problem. Every colorectal surgeon or every general surgeon will get in the OP. And it is a, one of the complex problem. If we won't understand, we'll see that we should send to someone else. So we'll talk briefly about the concept which I learned from my, my teachers. Uh, I am basically from Symbiosis University Hospital, uh, which is located in the Pune. And uh, this is my hospital greeting from the uh, Symbiosis University Research Center. So we'll start with knowing the what issue are there for treatment of complex fistula. We'll see issue number one. For treating any complex fistula, there are n number of surgery that there. A lift, a spistulotomy with immediate spinter repair, perfect, waft, advanced mid flap, set on and fistula plug and stem cell and n number of surgery i have not listed there are also there a number of people are telling there are many good success results but no single technique is appropriate for management of all complex fistula means this is a problem where we can't achieve 100 percent result so n number of surgeries are there but for my personal opinion, in last two years, I have visited Dr. Rajuna Sukal, sir. I have learned the lift. It is giving me a good result. And although yeah, there is a good result, around 10% of the patient, I need to do repeat surgery, that kind of scenario I am facing. But I have seen fistulotomy with immediate spinter repair, one of the master of the surgery, Dr. Parvesh Sheikh, who does. And in fact, I have seen the results also. It's really wonderful. So it's kind of many surgeon with many technique are telling that they are achieving best. But the fact is no one is at 100% success for with any technique. So second issue is the reports, whatever we are doing the imaging, what radiologists give a kind of this kind of report. I'm just taking for the presentation purpose. When surgeon feel that it is a complex fistula, he sent to the radiologist. And most of the radiologists, few of them gives very wonderful result, which will be helpful for surgery. But most of the radiologists use such a report. Seeing the report, again, surgeon will feel that it is a very complex surgery. So they tend to do under doing for the case. That will be the usual scenario. So what surgeon expect from the radiologist is most important. What any surgery, if we are planning to do, we want to know that where is the internal opening. We want to know that what is the relation with the spinter complex. Is it a high, is it a low transpintery? Is it really going to cause any spinter injury? We want to know, is there any abscess track secondary extension with respect to different anogenital species, which in fact is important for avoiding recurrence. We want to know about the external opening, blind ending, whatever is there, we want to know. 
third issue is classification there are a number of classification the classification purpose is to simplify standardize the communication between the clinicians radiologist and the surgeon who is operating they should guide the uh, clinician about the complexity and also appropriate treatment option for that particular case the guide surgeon to estimate the surgical success so that frankly tell to the patient before doing surgery we can counsel and also possibility of the post surgical sequelae that is especially incontinence that is much more important if we are handling the complex fistula these are the purpose we should get from the classification but we are having old park classification in fact it is a best classification one at that time tried to do something which is commendable it is a purely surgical classification based on the um, physical examinations or intraoperative examinations it's a most easy and most simple classification it's based on only coronal plane what surgeon sees but this is done in the pre mri era where we have bit less understanding about the complexity modern fistula and whatever there 70 that kind of time it was a pre mri era and mixed type of fistula in every class we can see if park is telling that intersplintric it may be low intersplintric fistula which is going down which is simple fistulotomy can sir but in park classification intersplintric high intersplintric fistula also classified as intersplintric because high intersplintric fistula treatment option will be different low intersplintric fistula treatment option is different we see this is a low transplintric fistula which is going down without any risk of injuring splinter we can cut down but if it is high transplintric fistula that we can't go with splinter cutting which will definitely land in disaster so they are not giving us classical idea what we should do and data is more obscure whatever they have classified more patients are in the type 1 and type 2 less patient in type 3 and type 4 in fact it is more towards the intersplintric and transplintric and extrasplintric supraspintric type usually hydrogenic extrasplintric supraspintric has been mentioned in the park but in fact the more uh, papers of the park are not consistent with the incidence of extrasplintric so supraspintric and recently gurg from india who has done lot of fistula cases they have told that it's extrasplintric supraspintric they have not found in even in one case it might be most probably hydrogenic most of the studies are also mentioned about the same if we take a same same university hospital classification this is one of the very good classification which most of the radiologist follows and most of the radiology gives us report in the same same university classification pattern this is mainly mri based classification but same from the same university hospital and it is a most usually rampantly used by radiologist to give a report of the fistula to the surgeon but is this going to solve is it solving our purpose no it is more or less par let's see it doesn't help much in surgical planning it it's it has classified type 1 intersplintric into type 1 intersplintric simple fistula or associated with abscess or secondary extension so both treatment for the intersplintric fistula if it is coming a low then fistulotomy will suffice it is not much different it is a type 1 of park has been divided into type 1 and type 2 of st jim if we see type 3 of st jim that is a fistula type 4 is a abscess or secondary extension it means that type 2 of park has been classified into another two type in the st james and what they have done the type 4 and type 3 of park supraspintric and extrasplintric they have clubbed as a type 5 so it is more or less kind of parks only which is also not giving us much idea what we should go ahead means it is not simplifying the concept or it is not guiding properly for us and most of them are concentrated towards what is a risk of complexity rather than surgical planning so issue number 4 is Uh, dr allen parks in contribution for the fistula is tremendous what his statement is it's impossible to perform the without accurate anatomical knowledge this is particularly true in case of fistula and where intemperate surgery can leads to disastrous results it's really horrible if we land in 
fist uh, incontinence it's really horrible or even if we are landing simple fistula is turning into complex and complex it will be really disaster so with this problem we will going to see what can be the best solution i am really thankful to dr parvesh sheik and dr arun rajinashakal in fact in last two year i have visited both of these my mentors in this study and i have learned lot of thing from them and whatever today i am presenting concept are belong to these two teachers so uh, these are most of the concept belongs to dr arun rajinashakal sir and dr parvesh sheik sir and uh, dr arun rajinashakal sir was so generous he has even given his material to share with many of the people so that concept will reach many of the people so we'll see let's see all four issue one by one how we can simplify with this concept so for this anatomy we need to understand in better way which is for the fistula treatment so they have simplified spinter anatomy of anal canal by rajuna sukal sir in fact they have published in 2016 in international journal of colorectal surgeon what they have mentioned is perianal anatomy for fistula purpose we can take into three heading one is anogenital muscle second is anogenital fascia third is anogenital spaces Let's see one by one what is happening. Anogenital muscle, we all know that internal sphincter is nothing but the continuation of circular muscle of the rectum. External sphincter is nothing but the levator continuation of the levator. But surprisingly, in hundred of cadaver, they have done dissection and they found out that there is only two component of external sphincter that is a superficial and subcutaneous. In fact, deep component is. continuous with levator ani so uh, he feels that we should not label a deep component as a separate rather than we label as a levator part so that we can tell that if something is going towards the levator going towards the deep which will be the more complex fistula so and we have proposed the three level concept of anal striated anogenital striated muscle there are three level upper middle and lower level in fact it is most important to know whole the concept of fistula is revolving around this concept so upper layer is levator which is starting from the coccyx and going towards the pubis and it has a three component iliococcygeus ischiococcygeus and puborectalis and second layer second layer concept is our superficial external superficial external starting from that core ligament and in front it is coming for the perineal membrane that will be separated by the superficial transverse perineum lower most is the subcutaneous external sphincter anteriorly presented by bulbo cavernosus so lower level is subcutaneous external sphincter which can be divided in any case without any fear of incontinence but if it is a superficial external sphincter specifically if it is a female anterior fistula if it is associated with ibd if it is associated with any other complexity we should be cautious for dividing even superficial external fistulas and levator we should avoid to touch this layer definitely if we divide the levator we land in incontinence which is most disastrous of fistula treatment so this is one of the cadaveric dissection image shared by rajana sukal sir you can see here the levator ana upper muscle and second striation is a superficial external sphincter third striation is the subcutaneous external sphincter we will see anogenital fascias there are three genital fascia which divides the perianal spaces into different as perianal space into different spaces there is a interspindric fascia which is there in between the two muscle which is there in between the two muscle internal and external sphincter there is the transversalis fascia which is running uh, transversely And, and another one is running obliquely ischial fossa fascia start in between the levator and superficial external sphincter uh, junction and goes towards the obturator internus if you take this of ischial fossa fascia which divide lateral space into infra levator and ischial spaces sometime we may get a patient where we are having a tenderness in the ischial fossa but 
there is no palpation and sometime we also explore we are not able to see any abscess here because this is a deep loculated abscess because of this fascia which is holding down and it can be traced on the wedge or deep if, if we dissect we can get it and transverse septum fascia which divides the ischial fascia and perianal space we'll see the anogenital spaces divided by this fascia the anogenital spaces one which is above the levator is a supralevator one which is below the levator is a infralevator one which is below the infralevator in between the ischial nerve fossa fascia and transversal fascia is ischial anal space and in between the two sphincter is a intersphincteric space and around the anal region and around the subcutaneous part of external sphincter is a your perianal region the posteriorly we will have a deep post anal space i find anteriorly at 11 to 1 o'clock we will have a perineum space in this we can see the bulbocavernosus and superficial external sphincter down is a perineal space and followed by the subcutaneous external sphincter here is a perianal space the perineal space is uh, contralateral to superficial external sphincter. Deep post anal space, we can see here anocoxygeal ligament, both side channel spaces, and below that we can get a deep post anal space. And in this, we can see that in the coronal plane, levator muscle is there, superficial external sphincter, so subcutaneous external sphincter, superficial external sphincter. This is a deep post anal space. In fact, deep post anal space will be connected with both side ischial anal spaces, which will make a horseshoe abscess on either side or both sides. We can see the natural abscesses around the perianal region uh, in the particular spaces. This is intersphincteric and perianal, ischial anal, infralevator, supralevator, and deep post anal and perineum spaces. Aim of any fistula surgery is to eradicate the sepsis, promote the healing of the tract, and avoid the incontinence. This is the primary aim of any surgery. Successful management of the fistula in ANO depends upon a good, proper surgical technique, I think there is a lot of evolution has happened in fistula surgery, a lot of techniques are there and in a particular expert hand with any technique, we can get a good result. But other than that, other two factors are also important in fistula is accurate preoperative assessment and also good postoperative care. But in surgical domain, we are having this, we can improve our surgical technique we can improve our good post-operative care, but we need to have a good pre-operative assessment, means good pre-operative imaging to tell that what is happening in the perianal region. The best modality of evolution, evaluation of the fistula and ano is digital rectal examination. In fact, I have seen two, three cases when I visited Dr. Parvesh Sheikh. Once he put the finger, he will draw what kind of fistula, even it is a high or low, and he believe that his finger is more better diagnostic modality than the imaging. And in fact, it is true. If a trained finger is there, it can work. But it is difficult to have a, such a trained finger in everyone's hand. We need a proper imaging. In fact, fistulogram has been told there is near about only 16% sensitivity. If we do scan, a good uh, scan radiologist is there, we can get around 70 to 80% good sensitivity in UAG. But MRI is a it's not operator dependent and lot of things are evolving in MRI. We can get a good imaging. If we are comfortable like a CT or MR rectum in MR fistula, definitely surgeon can give a good justice for the complex fistula, avoiding suffering. So what is a term complex fistula? When fistula is termed as complex fistula, we know that if it is anterior fistula in female, recurrent type is operated fistula, which is coming with a recurrence, or patient with incontinence, local irradiation, Crohn's disease, our tract crossing more than 30 to 50% of external sphincter or multiple tracts or associated with multiple hidden abscesses. So clinically, we can see these first three components, but we expect from the radiologist that last two components should be told by radiologist what is a complexity. So 
it is a good study has been conducted in 2002 telling that if the recurrence in recurrent fistula uh, mri role of mri in recurrent fistula if surgeon always act on mri specifically case of recurrent fistula chances of recurrence is 16 percent if surgeon never act on mri chances is around 60 percent and surgery guided by mri will reduce the recurrence in 75 percent of recurrent fistula so they conclude that in recurrent fistula we should do the uh, mri in fact all complex fistula should get mri in perspective of if we are having study or anything doing mri in all cases also if feasible will be a good advice it will be good acceptable because one recurrence will have a lot of trouble to the patient maybe mri you may be cost effective if we consider same thing but simple fistula can be operated without mri also so we have seen this kind of mri report which will make us more complex because they are giving a more complex report so we need something which we should get from the radiologist that's what the fistula gram mr fistulogram for the surgeon so uh, we should understand the basics of mri so that we will be more comfortable with mri so we'll touch a basics of mri in fistula so what sequencing they do is t2 sagittal axial oblique t2 coronal fat sat public uh, t2 axial fat sat fat saturated oblique uh, t2 coronal or star images we can call this so T2 images mainly for the anatomy, T2 with fat suppression so that we can reduce the hyperintensity. We can see fistula track mainly that is fat saturated or stir images we can get. So sagittal view mainly for getting orthogonal plane where we want oblique axial or oblique coronal sagittal film first will help. And oblique is mainly for relation to the sphincter to understand coronal to know the level of internal opening, relation of spinter, levator, ani muscle, and contrast density, T2, fat saturated or stir images are good enough. But if we are having contrast, it can be used. In contrast, we have to give in T1 weighted contrast images, which will help in better appreciation and also diffusion weighted images, 3D images that are additional gadget. But basic requirement is T2 and T2 fat suppress or T2 and T1 contrast images may suffice for us. So basically the second images are mainly for the axial cut. We are going to get the oblique cut so that we'll get the proper relation. These are the coronal cut we can get. So basic understanding where is the internal spinter, inside is the internal spinter and next one is the external spinter, white line which is prominent which is the interspintric face and lateral area is our ischial spaces. A coronal also we can understand these all the structures. So we want the radiologist to talk on anal clock so that they are doing most of the time uh, what level is there and according to anal clock they will give us the reports so our uh, dr arun rajna sukal sir has proposed the concept of fistula mapping fistula mapping in fact how the radiologist and the surgeon should report the fistula finding so that there will be something uniformity something uniformity which will be both are talking in same language which may improve the practical problems of fistula recording so this is proposed by dr arun Raj in 2017 it is basically a template to record and report the anorectal sepsis in fact if we tell abscess and fistula different it will cause a confusion it is nothing but it's a complete perianal sepsis or anorectal sepsis so why mri fistulogram is not well accepted in surgical fraternity the basic is Surgeon and radiologist, we are having very weak link. If we take a CA rectum, whatever T staging we are telling clinically, radiologist telling on MRI, and also the pathologist telling on the uh, pathological specimen, both everything is almost matching to everyone. So surgeon will read the MRI and he will better appreciate what's happening. If you take any CT, what we want, that thing we are getting from the radiologist, we will be very happy to read that. But here the weakest link between the surgeon and radiologist regarding MR fistulogram is there is no universal accepted communication between the two 
treating physicians so that's the major problem why mri is not well accepted in the surgical fraternity although it is the gold standard investigation so anal fistulomap this is nothing but document the passage of anal sepsis from inside to outside and describe the direction how track is going is it going high is it going down and what is the relation of the mainly splinter means external splinter and also abscess or cavity or track while it passes from start to end that we need to document so that it will be very easy for the surgeon to know that what's happening for the patient so to understand either in the lithotomy or prone position we have to take the fistula map this is the pro forma few of the abbreviations are there until and unless we know the abbreviation it's difficult to understand so let's see in next three slides what are the meaning of this abbreviation io is nothing but internal opening eo is external opening b is blind ending external side it may be external opening it may be blind ending t for the track c for the cavity a for the abscess abscess need to be drained cavity need to be drain curated and we need to put a draining catheter and track has to be like gated if we are doing the fistula or you are tackling by any other method which is better that also need a this information next level is if how track having relation with the external splinter if it is going in between the splinter only that is intersplintric not at all crossing the external splinter if it is going at the level of subcutaneous splinter or superficial splinter that will be a low transplintric fistula if it is crossing above the superficial external splinter either at the level of puborectalis or deeper everything will be the high transplintric fistula if it is going through the levator in fact the natural passage of the abscess will not go through the levator usually trans levator will be the hydrogenic fistula the spaces we have seen all seven spaces what the abbreviation itc is for intersplintric space pra is for perianal space IC for issue anal space, IFL for infra levator space, SPL for supra levator space, PRN for perineum space, DPA is a deep post anal space. So, what's the algorithm? We have to go from in to out. So, we'll tackle first as an internal opening. On the anal fistula map is not only to record by the radiologist, it should be also recorded by the surgeon. We are doing intraoperatively, we have to record what we have to see first we have to see the internal opening according to clockwise is it 1 to 12 where it is there we have to mention second we have to see the interspintric space there what is the finding is it abscess is it a cavity is it a track we have to note third level of the spinter is it going down at the low level higher level or is a translivator a fistula Anogenital space, rest of the six spaces, which space it is traveling. That has to be mentioned along with the what is a finding. End point, we have to mention in the clockwise. Is it external opening, one external opening, two external opening, which o'clock, one blind ending, two blind ending, which o'clock. So that in crux, if the radiologist give us in this format, surgeon will have 3D math in his mind. There is no need to read long report. If we get a crux of that in this format you plan any surgery any kind of surgery for the fistula all the members so for example we can see this is what the radiologist has given io6 istt st ifla ica prn t and eo7 so let's see we can map out what happening io6 intern opening i have drawn at the six o'clock ISTT in the interspintric track, there is a track we can consider for the lift. Then this track is going high trans, means it is crossing the deep spinter, it is going above direction. Then infra levator, it is forming the abscess, issue anal, it is forming the abscess. In the peri anal, we can see a simple track and it is opening at the level of seven o'clock. All the things are given by radiologists. We are mapping in our mind, we are preparing for the surgery. In fact, during the surgery, surgeon also should, what sir recommends is, during the surgery, surgeon also should report the map so that we will have a two-way communication with the radiologist that out of the five findings, this finding were missing or this finding is wrong. Next time he will be aware that what need to be given in that condition. 
second example we'll see here io6 internal opening at a six o'clock interspintric there is an abscess which is going to the deep post channel space reaching to the deep post channel space that is a dpa and there it is forming as an abscess abscess and in issue anal space it is traveling as a track and there opening at one first opening at a four o'clock and second opening at a three o'clock total distance is around five centimeter it is forming so this reports will give us mental map based on these three slide i am sharing our experience what has happened in last one year that i will share we have also started doing this anal fistula mapping in our patient we are using the radiological map what sir has taught and we are doing same thing on the intraoperative we prefer to do most of the lift we are doing same on the intraoperative also and we try to correlate between the two maps irrespective to all the five finding how these radiological reports are they correctly coming on the table in nine months 37 cases we have done four cases without mri has been operated in emergency we excluded near about 75 percent 76 percent were male 23 percent were female median age is 39 27 out of 33 were complex out of that 16 were recurrent fistulas out of total uh, 33 patient means 165 finding uh, eight finding were non-concordance between the radiology and interoperative finding first case let's see what happened to eight cases first case the radiologist has given internal opening at a five o'clock but on a uh, table we tried to inject the hydrogen peroxide but it didn't came at the internal opening considering the radiologist has given interspintric track also at five o'clock we did a lift we found out the nice track we ligated we cut the track and after that we tried to inject the s2o2 from the perianal aspect we seen that it was oozing in the interspintric means it has been there internal opening we couldn't see most probably might be because of blockage we couldn't see second case we have seen that the patient was having uh, the uh, track 12 o'clock internal opening and track at the interspintric level and it was bifurcating into two and both the labia were having the external opening but on the table there was no track only abscess was there but then also we put a tube on the both side and uh, near about four centimeter cavity was there internal side on the internal spinter side we ligated the track uh, here a point to note that patient has done mri two months before and came for surgery two months later and in that meantime both external opening were closed and she is having chronic infection which was collecting the abscess in the perineum space because of that we might have not got so we should do the mri and earliest within a week we should plan for surgery so that it will not going to change much and other six cases the radiologist was selling spinter was interspintric or load spintric which was not correlating that i think with more number of cases we will be more familiar with radiologists and radiologists will be more familiar with the spinter level and which will reduce eventually over the period of time so 95 percent there is a concordance between the radiological and surgical finding which is a good one which will help a lot of things for surgeon to understand so we'll see the anal fistula pattern this is also concept which has been proposed by the uh, arun rajnosikal in fact there are many classification are there there are many drawbacks are there every classification rather than telling new classification they're going to cause a uh, new trouble or new misunderstanding sir has proposed the patterns there are five different patterns of anal fistula how it travels so every abscess if it is a sub mucosal abscess it will rupture by itself rather than forming fistula it will heal by itself but when it goes and locked at the interspintric level then internal splinter spasm will happen it may travels in downward direction which will cause a low interspintric fistula if it is goes upward direction it will cause a high interspintric fistula if it is caused uh, transversely it will cause the low transpintric fistula if it is go high up through the levator it will cause a high transpintric fistula let's see what happened to everyone these are the natural plane where least resistance 
and naturally wherever a least resistance chance that on that area the abscess may travel and it will give the pattern so depending upon this pattern and in fact if the pattern is in between the two muscle it will never goes through the muscle the abscess will travel in between the two muscle and reaches to the space it will never cross through the muscle so that's a, also one of the concept he has proposed so let's see if it travels in downward direction it will be the uh, pattern one low interspinitic fistula if it travel down through the subcutaneous or superficial trans uh, external spinter muscle that will be the low transpintric fistula if it travels anteriorly in the perineum uh, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock region and it goes above the external spinter superficial external spinter that will be the anterior uh, high transpintric fistula which goes to the perineum space and perianal space and if travels posterior reaches the deep postanal space travels either on the ischial or any other side that will be the posterior high transpintric fistula and in fact it will be also high up of the superficial external sphincter but more on the posterior aspect and if the abscess goes into the sphincter and reaches the uh, above region in the interspintric space that is a high interspintric abscess it may form the supra elevator and sometime it comes to the parietal wall abdominal wall also so these are the mainly five pattern natural pattern where fistula can abscess can travel and in this pattern we can have either fistula or abscess which will be highly easily understandable so let's see what treatment can be done for each pattern pattern one where it is going in the interspintric and forming the abscess or it is reaching to the perianal space and forming the tract which is not at all crossing the external sphincter simply this patient can be undergoing for the fistulotomy or fistulotomy with immediate sphincter plasty that can be done if we are having low transpintric which is going through the subcutaneous sphincter and forming outside or outside track this also we can do a fistulotomy lift here can be done if patient don't want long cut or we can do a primary fistulotomy with immediate spindroplasty also can be done and flap also can be done in this type of cases so anterior high transpintric fistula these are the fistula where we need a spinter preserving surgery it is going anteriorly above the external spinter and reaching into the perineum space and perianal space they usually they will be located around 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock region these need definitely uh, either lift flap or uh, fistulotomy with immediate spintroplasty this is needed treatment for these kind of anterior high transpintric fistula so posterior high transpintric fistula when fistula is there which reaches directly to the deep postanal space after crossing the external spinter and from there it goes either on both issue channels fossa side and forms the abscess and region and perianal region to form the external opening or it may be related with abscess so these kind of patient are having high uh, transpintric uh, high transpintric uh, above the uh, superficial external sphincter which is reaching into the posterior deep postanal space this patient definitely need a spinter preserving surgery lift flap or fistulotomy with immediate spintroplasty or henle fistulotomy can be done also they have seen some of the cases pilonidal sinus we may consider but it has a long track which is going from the deep postanal space and reaching to that area and this is also one of the type of fistula uh, it is a part of the type 4 there also we can do the lift and we can solve this problem but some of the patient if having posterior high transpintric fistula reaches the interspintric space and comes out those are also possible other alternative in pattern 4 pattern 5 is the abscess reaching from the posterior region reaches in the interspintric and goes up and form the supra elevator abscess or it may be a interspintric abscess may be formed this can be tackled with a lift and tube drainage 
or intranal fistulotomy, which is also one of the good surgery where we can put our probe into the interspintry and divide the internal spinter and mass supplies the edges, which will help in hemostasis and also which will help avoid the recurrence, which is also one of the best modality of treatment for type 5 high interspintric fistula without any incontinence. We can have pattern 6. It can be a combined most common combination which is highly complex and most obviously going to have a recurrence is a posterior high transpintric with high interspintric. We are having a posterior high transpintric which is a risk of incontinence and also having high interspintric which is one of the most common combination pattern but other combination anterior high transpintric combination with high interspintric also possible. In these cases, what has been recommended by Dr. Rajuna Sakal sir is either you do lift with tube drainage of whole abscess is also good or you can do internal fistulotomy for this and you go outside and tackle this by taking a XE lift that is a extra spin trick outside going and tackling this fistulous opening that also can be possible. So fistula pattern and operative option by the Arun Rajna Sukal sir has been proposed that is low interspintric we can consider fistulotomy or if patient want early wound healing the fistulotomy with immediate spintroplasty also is feasible. Low transpintric we can do fistulotomy lift flap or fistulotomy with immediate spintroplasty. Anterior high transpintric these are the riskier patient if it is especially female patient we should prefer for a spinter preserving surgery that is a leaf flap or a fistulotomy with immediate spintroplasty. Posterior high transpintric, we can consider leaf flap or anything uh, spinter preserving we should consider. High interspintric, intraanal fistulotomy is a wonderful procedure and lift also can be done in this patient if, also. And if it is a type 2 and type 5 combination which is the most difficult to treat in this patient, we can consider intranal fistulotomy with suturing of the external sphincter from the ischial side, ischial fossa side, or we can consider the lift or fistulotomy with um, immediate spintroplasty. That is also one of the good option for this kind of cases. So, a few surgical procedure. These are the principal few surgical procedure. That is fistulotomy. We cut hold the fistula. A uh, set on placement, we put a set on and try to drain and we can use a cutting set on or we can use a, a draining set on and a lift that I have told we will divide the uh, 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 track in the interspintric space and fibrin glue we can inject. In fact, it has a around 16 to 20% only success rate. So another one is a intra-anal uh, endo anal uh, flap we can use that is also a good result in expert hand so we'll just see the lip procedure what sir has proposed how should do and what should we follow for the lip procedure so lip procedure in fact it has started in 2007 lift is nothing but ligation of interspintric fistula tract the lift is ligation of interspintric fistula tract there are uh, uh, technical thing about this procedure has been published by Rajna Sakal group in Coloproctology in 2019. First step is to identify internal opening. We flush from outside either NS or we can use S2O2 and then we do the interspintric dissection, incision at the interspintric groove followed by fistulous track hooking we can do and followed by sutured ligation of the interspintric tract and then curate from outside close the external spinter defect also and close the the incision at the interspintric level by using absorbable suture material so this is the uh, procedure lip procedure usually what will happen the fecal material goes to the fistulous tract and it will cause infection and recurrent will have perianal pus discharge but in case of the lift procedure they we have to go in between the two spinter and ligate on the both the side curate outside external spinter which will have a good result good healing 
so a non healing after the lift is also one of the problem is the what are the predominant causes for non healing is one is incorrect identification of the track so we should try to do the lift properly most important thing during lift is we need to have a good traction by stripping the both the buttock in the prone position so slippage of the ligation of the fistula track that is also been noted so nowadays uh, dr rajna sukal recommend another reinforcement stitch has to be taken by using Three a five by eight a needle vicryl two zero and bleaching of the anal mucosa. So while dissecting the interspintric dissection, we should be a very close to the external sphincter so that we will not make another iatrogenic hole in the anal mucosa and also internal sphincter. So incomplete removal of the granulation tissue, we should meticulously curate and uh, core out the fistula tract. If it is a small, we can do distal fistulotomy so that we will not leave any secondary abscess or cavity or extension in the distal tract. And also high transpentric fistula. We should understand the proper pattern, what patient is having fistula so that we can give a good justice by the recommended surgery. So I think uh, most of the thing I tried to touch. Uh, if anyone is having any doubt, please I will be happy to answer the doubts. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jankar, mm -hmm. for a usual very very uh, informative presentation. Uh, you touch in every aspect that we have controversy uh, about. Uh, fistula surgery is uh, going to be a controversial subject as always for everybody. Uh, there is different options for dealing with fistula. But uh, you explained very nicely that with uh, fistulas, the first thing you have to understand the anatomy before tackling any fistulas or complex fistulas, you have to understand the anatomy and you are nicely nicely uh, presenting that and i think our registrar our the senior uh, uh, doctors uh, will benefit a lot from your explanation uh, number two you you touch on mri and fistulogram uh, i agree with you fistulogram is useless uh, investigation and we are rarely using it now in our practice uh, mri you have to do it with uh, if you want to do it, we do it when we have a very complex fistula or a recurrent fistula, and you explain that very nicely. I, uh, I agree with you. The fistula management, uh, the very important thing about fistula management for our junior doctors to, to understand is that you need to drain the cavity. If you have a cavity, you have to drain it very well, widely drain the cavity, do good ferritage, and then you deal with the tract. And uh, you mentioned uh, different uh, modalities for dealing with the tracks. I think for also for our junior staff, if you have a sepsis and a cavity, you drain the cavity, deal with the, with the cavity, you retouch the cavity very well. And you can, if you don't know uh, the complex surgery, like the lift or the sphincter uh, preserving surgery, you can put a seat on on that tract and then you come in another uh, uh, session to do uh, the, the fistula surgery. Um, uh, we have been practicing here in Sudan and been doing the something similar to the lift for the last, uh, we started like in 1999 doing that. Uh, we do coring of the tract from outside. We core the tract till we reach the, the uh, external sphincter or sometimes the mucosa and then we like get the track there. Uh, instead of going between the sphincter, you go from outside and we pour the whole track down to the, uh, the uh, mucosa and then we like get it there and we have very good results with it. I think for, for the senior colleagues, uh, as you mentioned, uh, nowadays, we are practicing doing the fistulotomy and with the immediate sphincteroblasty. And again, we have a very good result doing this type of surgery. But 
this for the only for the expert and senior consultants to do this type of surgery. When you do the primary sphincter uh, fistulotomy and then you repair the sphincter. Uh, we've been doing this for the last five years and we have very good results with it. Although our cases are not that much, but I think that, that will be the way forward for the complex fistulas. Uh, again, thank you very much for this nice presentation. And uh, I will ask uh, now the floor is open for questions and uh, comments. We welcome, thank you, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You, sir. Uh, Hello, you hear me? Ah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, sir. We Mr. hear you. Suleiman, sir. Uh, Mr. Suleiman is the colorectal surgeon. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Omar. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, my... You can start. Yeah, we hear you. I'm Dr. Suleiman. I'm, uh, I'm a, yes, a colorectal surgeon at uh, Soba University Hospital. Uh, yes. thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very expert uh, look at a very difficult subject. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot from it. As uh, Mr. Omar, our experience here, uh, probably we are working in a tertiary referral center. And we almost always, uh, the patient referred to our complex fistulae and uh, uh, recurrent fistulae, probably operated three, four times and probably they have had five, six sessions of drainage of uh, different perianal abscesses. And uh, uh, our experience showed that initially you have to concentrate on the preoperative workup. And as you rightly said, you have to be very careful about the anatomy of the fistula and uh, probably you have to execute other predisposing factors. In particular, we are seeing multiple fistulae. And here, the work, part of the work which is include, we routinely do a flexisigmoidoscopy to exclude any Crohn's disease, tuberculosis, or any predisposing factor. And to, regarding the fistula mapping, the radiological mapping, we are having a problem about the standardization of the MRI protocol and the timing of the MRI relation to surgery. And other, you rightly said, if you do an MRI three months before and then you operate, uh, there a lot of things may have changed. A lot of abscesses may have flared at that time. So it may not correlate. And the other thing, as I said, it is a heterogeneous pattern of uh, MRI protocol. And uh, our advice here is that it is not a matter of just you routinely ask for an MRI. I agree with Omar that now we keep the MRI in, you do it in a special center where they have got an MRI protocol and for selected part of pa selective patients. My, our experience shows that the surgical mapping is the most important. And I'm very pleased to that you are still, we are probably, we are adopting the same classification of surgical mapping and surgical reporting and, and, uh, and the post-operative reporting, which is standardized the communication between uh, the surgical community. Uh, regarding, uh, just one comment about the lift procedure and our experience with it. Um, as I said, most of the time that our surgery is surgery for complex recurrent fistula with many iatrogenic tracts. And we found it most of the time it is very difficult because of the excessive, very tough fibrosis, which we see it in the, in the preanal region. And, the, and you may find it very difficult to delineate properly the interesphincteric space because you are dealing with the just shield of fibrous tissue. And you find that if the internal sphincter is there at all, it is just uh, uh, plastered with the external sphincter. And you can hardly find the beautiful uh, interesphincteric Plane, which is make the lift procedure sometimes very difficult. And I think this may explain sometimes the recurrence after the lift procedure. As Omar said, we are teaching our uh, registrars that don't fiddle much. If you find it difficult to do a ser proper surgical mapping, it is safe to put a seat on and then you come out. And uh, rather than trying to misjudge a high transphenteric high fistula for a low transphenteric fistula. And uh, the other thing which I think that very important is the post-operative management. And uh, I, most of what my advice for our surgeons who are doing complex fistula surgery, that they have to do the post-operative dressing themselves. And I think that because 
most of the time in the absence of proper digitation of cavities in the postoperative period, and um, proper irrigation of the wound, and um, proper drainage, I think this is a common which we found that is the most likely cause of recurrence of fistula. So I think we have to put a lot of emphasis on this part of the management, that the postoperative management don't lose the patient for a routine health center to do a, a superficial dressing or not. The patient, they have to come to the hospital where there is specialized nurse to do that, a well-trained nurse to do that. Otherwise, you have to do it yourself. You have to digitate the wound. You have to irrigate the cavity, drain it well. And that is something which you have to bear with it for four to six weeks till you make sure that there is a nice granulation healing from the bottom of the wound. But otherwise, you may end with an incomplete healing from the bottom and found that there's just a superficial closure of the skin and it's another cause of recurrence. So uh, as I said, the, 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 the primary fistula is easy to deal most of the time, not all the time. But I think the, 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 the hard lesson and the experience needed is mainly when you deal with a, re a, a recurrent fistula or a complex fistula. Thank you very much for your time. I really enjoyed it and there is a lot of knowledge and a lot of skills in it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. You really well said, sir. Uh, I think fistula, we should not take it easy because one recurrence, it will be a very difficult for the patient and also difficult for the next senior surgeon to tackle that problem. In fact, we all should take a fistula seriously and we should learn or we should understand at the first time only in a better way and also we give a best dedication in the post-op at least one or two weeks where fistula is healing proper if we give irrigation proper washing in the post-op that will give a good result for the patient also in fact any technique there is no standard technique in fact i will say any surgeon comfortable with whichever technique should continue but we should give a good dedication also pre-op and post-op if we do that, we definitely will get a good result in these cases. Excellent. Uh, we have Mamoun Nabre, Dr. Mamoun Nabre from Saudi Arabia. Uh, Mamoun, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Uh, uh, thank you Hi, very sir. much. Hi, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. I hear, sir. Mamoun, sir, I hear, okay. sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jankar, for your informative talk. It is very, very, very uh, rich. And thank you again for educating our uh, juniors. And uh, number two, thanks to SSC for organizing these uh, meetings. And uh, the third thing, to say hi to my teacher, uh, Mr. Suleiman Hussain, and my colleague, Omar al Farouk for uh, this uh, Richmond uh, talk. Uh, my name is Mamoun Abre. I'm a trauma GS uh, critical care surgeon. Um, uh, this is the uh, best thing uh, happening uh, for our junior to be educated with international staffs and to be communicated with outside world. So just a few things for uh, my colleague, junior colleague. If you see a patient in ER with a small nodules in the renal area, don't underestimate it. Take it serious and investigate it. We see these things and patient coming up with uh, necrotizing fasciitis, forens, gangrene, just because diagnosed wrongly, query, uh, hemorrhoids, and sent home with antibiotics, and he came back in septic condition. Don't underestimate this small, tiny, painful things in that area. Can just make an unhappy ending. And uh, thank you very, uh, very much for all of you for uh, participating. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You are well said, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I also from our experience that I'm always telling the registrar, I just want your thought about it, that in most fistula, especially if you don't find the internal uh, opening, the best thing to do, and sometimes it's the only thing you can do, is to curate the cavity very well, and then make a good drainage of that cavity after curettage, and then you follow that by good meticulous dressing and you will find that the recurrence rate is very low if you do this sex. What, what do you thought yeah. about that? Yeah, it's true, sir. All abscess will not become the fistula. There are few abscess only will become the fistula. Uh, so if we are not able to find out the internal opening, 
rather than meddling and making hydrogenic opening it is better to drain the abscess and give good wash there is chance that it may heal if it is going to have a fistula then we are going to have a nicely chronic inflated tract which can be tackled with any particular procedure the surgeon is experienced so it's not always we should do perineal abscess we should find out the internal opening if we are not finding out it's good just we drain it and put a, a, a tube inside or drain it and make a empty cavity give good wash in the post op definitely there is a chance that it will heal in a better way uh, but in those scenario nowadays there is a trend is coming out it is abscess is there we found out the track and also do the definitive procedure definitely it is for the senior experienced guys who are there but if we are juniors are there it's always better rather than harming give best first aid for the patient drain the abscess if we have drained the abscess give us good post operative care in that also most of the patient will heal without any forming the fistula if at all going to form the fistula we can tackle in the better way in the next setting uh, thank you much thank you another comment actually uh, thank you amar for raising this point uh, i think this bring us to the way we counsel our patient for fistula surgery don't simplify things for the patient we say that okay it is a very simple procedure you'll be in hospital for a couple of days and then you go home and then it will heal no i think we should have to explain the patient thoroughly that the complexity of the operation the outcome of the operation and then you have to explain the, to the patient exactly that if you try to find the internal opening you get the fistula tract open either wise you are going to put a seat on and probably you explain to the patient there is a chance that you might have had another surgery and this is what we are saying to our junior that if you find, don't fiddle don't don't try to create a hydrogenic tract as the omar said if you fail to find a, a, an internal opening by injecting micelline blue by gentle probing just stop at this stage curate the cavity and then you explain to the don't tell the patient that everything is finished tell the patient there is a high chance to bring you again after four weeks after three weeks for another eo examination to make sure that it is just a blind tract or as you rightly said you might find by that time there is a well matured tract and and most of the time for those such patients my experience is that you will find in the second session you will find an internal opening which had been fibrous or it was been very tiny or you haven't been patient enough to to find it and this bring me to the to to the way we handle uh, fistula patient or generally in erectile conditions and i think that uh, this is an operation which shouldn't be left for the uh, junior staff this should be unless there is a senior person available and it shouldn't be put at the end of the operation list this is something which has to be put, uh, handled with proper care like any major surgery because the complications are very detrimental to the life of the patient repeated surgery as you rightly said being incontinent having multiple operations and the other thing which i have to counsel the patient is that don't change the surgery that if i explain to them that the success rate is not 100% and if there is a recurrence the primary surgeon is the most likely one to find to to correct the recurrence but if you go for another surgeon he will find he will try to find his way Uh, and probably this is a, another recurrence and then you move to another surgeon this is another recurrence so explain to the patient thoroughly that you have to be patient with the disease you have to be patient with the surgery the answer may not be in a ferris operation the answer may be in two operations or three operations whatever but uh, the idea is that if the operation fails don't change the surgeon probably comes to the same surgeon i am sure is the right one to correct the uh, the the ferris operation yeah can i come in can uh, i think can you hear me uh, Ah, yes, Professor Rashid. Uh, Professor Rashid. Well, uh, thank uh, you, Dr. Jack. Uh, sorry. Okay, uh, Rashid, I'm a general surgeon. I'm not a colorectal surgeon. Uh, thanks for this, uh, addressing this very complex problem. You just triggered the nostalgia of Sir Alan Parks because I think I, I attended his St. Mark course in 1980s, early, just before. And at that time, he put this, this uh, beautiful classification of fistula in Europe. I have two yeah. questions. The first question is that how many of your patients have got uh, an underlying cause like diabetes or inflammatory bowel disease? 
And uh, the second is that what is your advice? Because perianal abscess is a very common encounter in the casualty, usually done by the residents. So what is your advice for uh, a patient coming, uh, for the doctor, patient coming with a perianal abscess? Uh, unfortunately, some of these patients, they think when it bears, that is good, which is, I mean, they come very late, they put some local things on it. But anyway, uh, he's draining a perianal abscess. Does he look for a fistula? And how can he, I mean, do the fairest job properly and could yes, that really uh, avoid the fistula? Yeah, yeah. sir, uh, coming to first question, in my last two years, I have got two Crohn's disease. One was came with a perineal, water can kind of perineum, multiple draining abscesses. For that patient, we just, I just drain the perineal abscess and put multiple set on and near about nine months patient was coming to me for daily dressing and every 15 days coming for the biological, it has wonderfully helped. Another one patient was there, similar kind of the patient, biological was not affordable. The medical guy has put on azathioprine, which has helped. But both the cases, I have not done any surgery. I just drain the abscess, put a set on and came out. So that has helped me and really I was thankful for medical gastro person to give a proper medication which has allowed to heal it. So coming to second question, if perianal abscess is there, we should not have every case decision that I will going to tackle the fistula. What we prefer here is if perianal abscess, not ruptured perianal abscess is there, make a small nick in the perianal abscess try to infiltrate some methylene blue into the abscess and try to squeeze there. And meanwhile, in the anal region, you just see something is coming. If you are seeing something is coming and you feel that comfortably it is a low fistula, you can try. Otherwise, in case of perineal sepsis, it is always better to tackle the abscess by draining. Uh, drainage should be done. Thorough curator should be done. We are feeling deep cavity. We can put a washing catheter inside. Otherwise, if you feel a superficial cavity nicely drain and then you just allow them to wash. And it is always better if a surgeon is new, not confident residence level, drain the abscess. If surgeon is confident, sure that we are tackling with the abscess with low fistula, you can do the fistulotomy. And in fact, nowadays I have seen whatever I have learned fistula, I have learned from only to these masters, Dr. Parvesh Sheikh and Dr. Arun Rajna Sukal. I have seen them doing the spinter preserving surgery in the abscess also. So it can be possible. But personally, I always prefer to drain the abscess and give a chance and later on tackle for the fistula. Uh, one of the, our senior registrar, Wala, you, uh, you raised your hand before. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, yes, thank you. You can unmute yourself, yeah, voila. Hello? Yes. Yes, we hear you. Uh, my, my, my question. Uh, unmute, yeah. Well, I was just unmute yourself. Uh, that's it. I am. I'm just, just. I'm having troubles with the. Uh, inter Okay. For comment or question? I think uh, in the chat uh, there is questions, Mr. Omar. Yeah. My question, yeah. sir? Yes, we can hear you all. Go on. Okay, any other questions? We have uh, 
Okay, there is a question. Is there any role of uh, SIT's path in the post-operative management? Dr. Janker, somebody asked, is there any role of the SIT's, SIT's path in the post-operative management? Connecting. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sir. There I got disconnected. Uh, sir. Yeah, there is a question. Is there any any role for the sixth path in the post-operative management? Uh, sir, I couldn't hear, sir. Any? The question is any role for sixth path in the post-operative management? Sixth path. Yeah. Sir, usually two to three times we recommend a SIDS bath and it is a lukewarm water using a betadine. We tell them to mix the betadine and uh, use a lukewarm water. And importantly, when we are doing the SIDS bath, try to contract and relax the perineal sphincter so that anything is there in the even anal canal above the dentate level that will get clean nicely. There is another uh, registrar asking, do we, do we have to tackle the fistula with the abscess as an emergency or we deal with the abscess first? I think you answered that before. Yes, sir. Yeah. But we always should consider as an anorectal sepsis rather than defining abscess or fistula. We should take as a complex as an anorectal or perianal sepsis. Depending upon the present scenario, we should tackle that scenario. Excellent. Any more comments or questions? Dr. Yasir, you are welcome, Dr. Yasir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hello, Professor Samrat uh, Yasir Shambati, General Serion. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank my, you. Uh, my question uh, Have you any uh, experience about the laser management of the fistula? Number one. Laser is a one of the energies, sir. Uh, the principle of surgery has to be followed. Laser is a technically, it is an energy source. We are using conical, but whatever I have understood from the laser is, there also the technique, either someone is doing a, a submucosal ligation and then putting it outside. It's basically, it is handling the distal tract. But most important management of the fistula is a proximal at the level of internal opening, at the level of uh, internal splinter or in between the two splinter. That area is a more important. For that, we need to understand the major patterns. We need to understand the pathophysiology. Maximum whatever has been told in the laser is that is mainly to handle the distal tract. But I personally don't have much experience about the laser. But it is another one surgical procedure. If we use it, we'll get if we are expert in that, if you are doing frequently, if you are getting the, uh, the result, we can use it. All right. Uh, second question, uh, the patient with the recurrent fistula three, four times, do you resort for any uh, defunctioning uh, colostomy or uh, ileostomy? No, sir. No, sir. No. Uh, no. We should not prefer because anorectal uh, fistula or perianal sepsis is a benign condition. Until and unless we are having a bad perineal sepsis, which is endangering a life, we should not touch. That was I explained. Perineal sepsis patient came with water can. I don't have picture to share now, but multiple opening were there in the perineal region. That patient also, we just drained the abscess. We have given proper antibiotic care. It has healed. Crohn's disease patient can heal in the perineal sepsis. Means any patient can heal. We should avoid because it's not a malignant disease. It's a benign disease. As much as possible, we should not step in for the defunctioning colostomy. You take care of perineum, it will give a good result. All right. Uh, number three, uh, what type of the seton? Uh, cutting seton, or like just uh, you put a seton for drainage and later on you come to manage that? Yeah, usually preferable is a drainage. If you are having perineal sepsis with inflammatory bowel disease, drainage seton is a... I, we don't prefer, whatever I learned from the masters is, we don't prefer the cutting seton. All 
and whatever two patient i have used is those are the simple draining set on to drain the abscess avoid forming the again perineal sepsis till the time that biological or management of ibd medications are working all right thank you very much thank you uh, we have professor questions. i think uh, Professor Jamal Shellali, is there yes, is this one question from the registrar? Uh, Endoanal ultrasound and manometry indication in malignant of actual anus. Sir, endorectal ultrasound is a subjective dependent. In fact, we had a radiologist in our hospital, in Jam Hospital I was working, which is my training center. There, one radiologist who used to do good uh, endorectal ultrasound. But again, same thing will come subject to subject, radiologist to radiologist. The finding may vary. But I feel like UAG in abdomen, CT in abdomen. If we are doing CT for major cases where we don't want trouble, you will be more happy that how we are going to have. But here also, it is the available modality is MRI. The cost of MRI investigation, if you take a recurrence and operating on the patient, it's compared to that, it will be a less only. If you are feeling complex fistula, mm -hmm. rather than doing anything else, it should be done MRI. But best hand trust is also having a good uh, pre-operative reporting. And uh, coming to next question, manometry. In fact, manometry, if we feel that you are not having good resting tone, you are not having good squeeze pressure. If you want medical aspect to note down manometry and perianal tone, you can do it. But in those cases, I have seen if we do a proper fistulotomy with spinter repair on the table, that will give a good result for the patient. I think, uh, as you rightly say, manometry is not a routine thing we do in fistula surgery. Uh, you, we only do it if the, the sphincter is questionable before the surgery. And uh, sometimes you do it if you, as you, uh, Mr. Janker say, you medical legally want to <clears throat> protect yourself. So you have to do it just to, to uh, assess the sphincter uh, before you doing your surgery. Okay. Uh, we have... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jankar, for this you, uh, very interesting uh, lecture. And uh, I am, I am uh, a general surgeon. I, I would like to commend, really, uh, I like the way that you have introduced uh, your new classification. Sir, sorry, this is not my classification. It belongs to Dr. Arun Rajnasukal. We all should be thankful for the person who has shared because he is a, one of the so generous professor. He has taught two days. I feel, I hear, announce everyone that these are the two guys are doing extremely good. Dr. Parvesh Sheikh, his operative is excellent. And Dr. Arun Rajnasukal, his thoughts are excellent. If you get the chance, visit them one or two days, spend them, because these people are generous to teach. And in fact, today, whatever I am able to present, a lot of things I have got from them. And his thought is to share with others so that let them, everyone, have good concept of the fistula. And if you want to thank for the Presentation delivery, it's okay. If you want to thank for the concept, that thanks should go to Dr. Paresh Sheikh and Dr. Arun Rajnasikar. And, and also for you for transmitting this uh, knowledge. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. First time for me, honestly, to have uh, seen or heard about it. And I think it's very useful. My question. Uh, I usually deal with the commonest type, which is the low fistulas. And yes, I, I tend to prefer to do a fistulectomy rather than fistulotomy, which is removing of the whole tract. Uh, but this will end with a rather large, larger wound than that of fistulotomy. Um, just to let my registrars understand what I mean, fistulotomy is just cutting over and deep just to open the tract and fistulectomy is to remove the whole tract. So I, I usually do fistulectomy. My question is, what is uh, your preferred operation? Uh, do, you, do you still do fistulectomy in your institute? This is the question number one. Number two, 
if you do if you do pistillectomy, um, would you pre ha have you any um, experience with closing uh, or suturing it primarily rather than uh, keeping it open and dressing the wound for four or six weeks? Thank you. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, preferably the fistulectomy, fistulotomy, both are serving the same. Uh, personally, I feel uh, that's what I am feeling. The fistulotomy and fistulectomy, you are taking out the infection. Uh, in fact, it is infect, curate the wound, clean the wound, open the wound, lay open the wound, curate the wound. If we are taking out the infective material, so it is not like the cancer or something where we need to be radical and take out. Here, purpose is to open the wound. But both are mostly equal. Only issue is if we are not very much good in the procedure, we may tend to overdo, which should be avoided. If at all, it is a going above the superficial external splinter, going to the levator. In those conditions, if we are generously trying for fistulectomy, it will harm in junior hand. But if we are planning for simple fistulotomy and curating the wound, it may also serve the purpose I feel. That's what we practice. Either we do splinter preserving surgery, or if it is a low interspintric, low transpintric, we will plan for fistulotomy, curating the wound. But nowadays, after last six months back, I have visited Dr. Par Arun Rajna Sukal, sir, one and a half year before. But last six months back, I have visited Dr. Parvish Sikh. He does, uh, he is a one person who does only complex fistula. Simple fistula, he will tell that you go and operate at any other place. What the sir does is, he will take complete fistula. And he is so confident to suture every splinter. If we are that much confident, we should go for that procedure also. That is not wrong. And nowadays we are planning, we are doing for a low transpintric or low interspintric fistula, trying to do fistulotomy, curating the tract, nicely cleaning everything. And we are taking two stitch because the approximation of the wound will help to reduce the pain in the post-op and also will help to heal better. That might be a good one. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jankar, for this nice presentation. I think there is a lot of question and a lot of uh, comment, but uh, I think we have to finish now. And Thank you, sir. Thank to, you. To, to, to see you again with this very uh, informative and nice lecture. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Thanks Thank a lot. Everybody. Thank you for giving Thank opportunity. Everybody. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, Thank you, everybody. Thank you.